What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is True Crime with T Rev, man, with the Rev Gang family. I do want to talk to you guys about a few things that have been going on in the case that I found out and been digging in. And uh, what has came up recently has been this white vehicle. It was a Hyundai between 2011 and something else. But yes, we do want to check into it and see if it has any significance to the case. Let me know down in the comments what you think. I'm going to play the video from that. I do appreciate everybody's support. Everybody has been showing massive amounts of support. So I will go live about it today, if not tomorrow at the most. But I do appreciate all the new subscribers. We've gained about a, almost a thousand in the last day and a half. Uh, I do appreciate everybody coming by. This case is heating up in a way that they're finding a bunch of different things. They have an HVAC guy come there. Why would they have an HVAC guy come there? Put that down in the comments. I may make a video about that also. There's been some things, but still, I feel like they cleared a lot of people too early in this case. And that right there has a significance to it because these people have had time to heal they had time to get away and get rid of evidence they've had time to get rid of the clothes evidence would be closed anyways but i'm just saying in general they've just slacked so much on this case to the point that it's, it's like man what how do you come back from it how do you come back from it and get somebody to come in there and make a confession whether it was one or two people that were involved now we have been talking about jack showalter on the channel and how suspicious he looks now what does jack drive does jack drive a white honda did jack do this i still want to know that because Jack Showalter still right now is my number one suspect. I still think he has did it allegedly, as you see down there, T-Rev 757 allegedly. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check out this clip right here, and I will be right back with you. We're going to begin in Moscow, Idaho, where one clue could possibly lead to a break-in, a uh, break rather, in the quadruple murder case. Right now, police are searching for the occupants of a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra with an unknown license plate. Our Alex Capriello joins us live this morning with what you need to know as you're waking up this morning. Good morning to you, Alex. Hey, good morning to you, Mitch. Yeah, this is a major breakthrough in a case that has so far stumped investigators. Police are right now asking for the public's help to identify the driver or the occupants of that white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Let's put it up on the screen so everyone can take a good look at it. They say anyone who knows someone who drives that type of car should come forward right away. Investigators believe there was at least one person driving it around the time and location when those murders happened, and they could have critical information about that case. Later today, police will continue to remove items from the home where those murders happened. For several hours yesterday, officers were seen gathering personal items belonging to the victims. That's clothing, electronics, golf clubs, and so much more, and it's all going to be sent back to the families. The police chief tells News Nation that this is a necessary step to help bring closure for the victims' families. It's important to me. It's important for us um, as a department to go in and, and take care of the families and, and get the items for them so that uh, they can have some of those back and some of those memories back that are fond memories. And while there are no suspects or persons of interest named yet, some of the law enforcement experts that News Nation has been speaking to say that uh, it's pretty unlikely that the detectives would show their full hand at this point. And anyone that has been so-called cleared by the police could certainly be revisited as a suspect later on, say. Mitch? They are really keeping it close to the vest when it comes to that Idaho investigation, Alex. And you were there for several days earlier this week. You know better than anyone else how close they're keeping it. Can you give us a sense, though, of where they are in this investigation? I know to outward appearances, it seems like they're flailing and they have nothing, but I, I am sure that they are working on this very hard uh, and, and have got to be investigating some leads here. Right. When you ask the police chief about this, he'll tell you that they're just at the fact gathering stage. I know that sounds kind of vague, but really what that is, it's just continuing to collect evidence, continuing to collect tips and building, uh, you know, as much of a case as possible, hoping to uh, follow through on some of those leads. So while it's certainly not at the pace that a lot of folks would like to see this at or no more or we don't have as many major breakthroughs as potential. Hopefully we would like to have at this point, uh, at the very least, to give the police some credit, they are putting out a press release about every day, maybe every two days with at least a little nugget of information, new info that we can provide to the viewers and hopefully move this case forward. So to their credit, at least they're sharing some information of this case with us. <laughs> yeah, Alex, it might not be great for TV and the news folks like us, but they are working on solving the case, and I don't mean to disparage them in any way. I know they're working hard on this. Alex, thank you for that. Let's bring in former FBI Special Agent Tracy Walder for a little more insight. Tracy, 
How significant could this vehicle and the driver of this car be to this case? Well, thank you for having me, Adrian. So I think that this could be very significant because the reality is, is we do have a pretty good timeline of when the murders occurred. So somewhere in the early 3 a.m. time frame. And as Brian has shown repeatedly, it's a pretty windy remote road that isn't, you know, passable a lot by many, many cars. And so I think having it narrowed down to this vehicle at this time in that particular area is very significant. Police have said they're keeping quiet about this case on purpose in order to help catch this killer. How so? So that's actually something that's that's extremely typical, although I understand that it's incredibly frustrating, particularly in something like this. You know, you've got 20 year olds and a lot of people relate to that or, you know, are. I think part of the problem is that we are really hindered by what we see in pop culture and that we see that cases are figured out, you know, within 24 hours or that blood analysis comes back within 15 minutes. And that's just not the case. And so I do think that police on purpose for not wanting to damage prosecuting this case ultimately are staying tight lipped. And I I don't necessarily think that that's a bad idea. However, my heart does go out to the victim's families because I would imagine that's incredibly frustrating. Yeah. And just agonizing. It's been several weeks, no leads, uh, apparently. Uh, But if the families were to hire private investigators, could that help or hinder this investigation? So I think it could do both. I think a set of fresh eyes is never necessarily a bad thing. Um, And I understand if if I was unfortunately in this situation, I would want to do everything that I could um, to help solve this case. So I don't necessarily think that a pair of fresh eyes is a bad thing. However, what can happen is that this kind of muddies the waters. If the private investigator is requesting information from police, they have to stop what they're doing and give it to them. Um, And sometimes too many cooks in the kitchen can, can sometimes be a bad thing and that people are sort of stepping all over each other. When a case like this shows no apparent progress, what is the next step for the FBI? So if a case shows no apparent progress, really the next step, at least what I used to do, was go back and re-interview people. A lot of times, and I I think this goes to the discussion that they were having earlier, um, where we had people who had maybe been cleared and them issuing a statement that they could go back and re-interview them at any time. And I think as evidence emerges, like this white Hyundai, they might go back and start to re-interview some of those people that they have cleared. So I think that's probably what they're doing next. Thank you, uh, Tracy, as always, for being with us. We appreciate your time this morning. So after watching those two videos, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this white Hyundai is going to play a big part in this case? Or do you think it's not? Do you think it has no significance to it? And this is just speculation, pure speculation on the channel at this point. But I I really want to dig into everything that comes out because obviously they want to know about this vehicle for a reason. Now, it, it, it had to have been caught on some CCTV camera that this vehicle had taken off. There's some significance here to this vehicle or else they wouldn't be mentioning it. And that's just something that I want to bring to point here. And I know I have some people from this area, a few people that are subscribed to the channel that have their kids that go to this college. And I do appreciate the insight from you guys. I have gotten some emails from people, a lot of good and very great information that you guys have sent to me. I've been diving deep, digging and digging and digging, but I wanted to play these two clips to get your guys' opinions on what you think about this vehicle and why would they be reaching out and why would they be asking about this vehicle? What is the significance behind this vehicle? Like I said, my speculation on it is that they seen it on CCTV from maybe a neighbor's camera around a time frame that they think the murders had. That's just my opinion. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the next video. Drop down, spark up the conversation in the comments below. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you and love you all. Peace.